the only answer back. So, if y'all have been in a cave. Oh, uh, before we finish, just out of my curiosity, how many of y'all have been on a regular tour before? Cool. I don't think you're going to be able to do that. Yeah. Have fun. Don't know. Anyway. This is a pantry tour, and if you're taking pictures, that's flat. This is Bill said, my name is Ryan. I'll be your illustrious and charming tour guide for the next hour and a half. Hopefully not two and a half hours. Now I want to modify the old lantern routine here. We'll pick up our ears real quick now. She was teaching you, showing you how to hold them by the bail. Please don't hold them by the bail. Like she said, these are the most, these are the best that money can buy, so those bails will fail. What I would like you to do is hold them like that. Hold them down to your side like that way. That way they're, they're illuminating the walkway and seeing these bales fail a thousand times. So, all right, guys, have a look down below your feet to your, to your foot there. They all ain't they pretty? Yeah. Make sure that bad boys are wrapped strapped tight on your feet. It's good work in order. You throw a shoe on one of my stairs, that will really be catastrophic. Okay, if you use the handrails, at least one handrail holding on to your landing with double at all times, okay? Decided they were going to wait for him up top. Maybe he would work his way back up out of this big old hole. 
Now they made their fires, and they're sitting around the sinkhole, let live up there, having a good time. It's starting to get dark and it's getting a little colder. Well, you all know at that particular time, there were over 500,000 bats in this cave. And dinner time comes about dark time, does it not? Well, that is the only known natural entrance. Where are the bats going to go to get dinner? Through that hole right there. Well, then Native American, those OC Indians are sitting up there on top of that big old hill, outside that sinkhole right there with their fire going. And all of a sudden they feel a warm, warm rush of air coming up. 60 degree temperature air coming up out of the hole. That foul, foul odor. Then they heard the bite of thousands and thousands. And all of a sudden they saw a big old huge blast of black cloud. Coming out of that hole. Now they knew what bats were, but they didn't they've never seen them in that numbers. And they felt that warm heat and that solid stench. They thought they just had, really, had uh, brought up the evil spirits, the demons of the depths. They took off running down the mountain, back down to the village. They told everybody in the village, don't ever go up there again. Please don't ever go up there again. It's evil. It's cursed. Well, the next day they came back up, still hoping to find their, their uh, partner. They never did find him. They went around all the trees, around all the sinkhole up there, and they cut sideways notches. And all the trees up there wore off anybody else from falling through that hole right there. Now, if you all came from the western side of Stone County, you came through a little wide spot in the road, just down the road down there, that's called Notch, Missouri. That is where they got that name. From those notches and trees, they, when the pioneers started selling here, those notches were still visible on all those trees around there. Sure. Stand there on the stairs. And you got a good visual. Let everybody have a good chance to see these chiseled good looks. For 70 foot steel concrete, steel and concrete tower. Everybody is everybody here familiar with what was here before that steel and concrete tower? 70 foot wooden ladder that was put in here by William Lynch and his girls, his daughters. Well, back in the day when they were giving their tours, it took a minute to get down that wooden ladder and slide down that debris pile on your rear end with those leather with those uh, overalls with the leather behinds on them, and then pick action your way all the way back up here. People got a little bored waiting for their turn to go up and down the ladder and up and down the debris pile. So the girls, Miriam and Genevieve, with the, that was the daughters of William Lynch, decided that they were going to have to do something to entertain the guests as they were going up and down and in and out of the cave. Well, those two girls just happened to be incredibly talented. They were accomplished pianists, opera singers, they were published poets. I mean, they did a lot back up in Canada. So when they got down here, they, they were kind of at a loss of what to do. So nobody down here in the Ozarks really had a clue as to what opera was. If they knew what poetry was, but they didn't, they didn't know what that kind of singing was. Well, they had the bright idea to sing to the people when they got down here. Well, they started standing down here on the debris pile, on top of the debris pile, and they were singing opera songs to the people as they're going up and down up and down. People were like, what are you, are you sick? What's your problem? Then they decided, well, that's not going to work. Dad, old William Lynch, decided, hey girls, you play the piano. Let's do that for them. So they lowered a baby grand piano down here on top of this debris pile. And the girls would sit up here and play that, they played more modern tunes and more, more uh, country tunes for the people as people were going up and down and people really enjoyed that. Well, as you know, this is a very damp environment down here. Wood and wire do not mix well with water. So those pianos would eventually become so out of tune and out of repair that they couldn't be repaired. So instead of pulling the baby grand pianos back up out of the, out of the uh, sinkhole, they would kick them off over here into the darkness. And it's, that's a proven fact because back in the later on in the years when uh, Pete and Jack Hersham were in here, they would, go, they would come down here and they would see little white specks down there at the bottom. They go down there and those were the ivory keys 
from the pianos that they would kick down the, down that uh, pile right there. Now, as when the when the Hershens took over in, in 1948 to 1950, they were making improvements to this place. Well, what they did was they took down that wooden ladder and they started. They built a, a wooden tower where this now stands. Well, like I said before, they didn't have that tower here. They had the ladder. Well, William Lynch got real old real quick, and he was not able to go up and down that debris pile. But he could make it down that ladder, and he'd stand right here on top of this debris pile. He'd wave at people as they went down the tower, and then going on through the serpentine passage, and that was his routine. He'd do that every day. Well, when the Hershens took over, they built the tower, and they put a locking door where we came through up there, but that didn't have just a lock to go in, and you could open to get out. It had a double lock in and out. You had to have a key to get in and out of this cave. Well, they were doing their tours later in time, later on when the years went by, and the tower here, people would be going down, doing their daily thing. Everything was all nice and copacetic, and one day a guide was down here and he made sure that he locked the door. He had a guy's tour down here. They got down to the bottom of the cathedral room down there and he just happened to look up here to the top of the debris pile and he saw an old man wearing gray or white clothing and he's just sitting there waving, waving at everybody and that's a big no-no. Nobody ever goes off trail unless you're an employee here and that old man was not an employee. So he ran, the cave guy ran over to the phone. We got a phone, we have landlines down here. Obviously cell phones and radios don't work in a big old cave. He got on the phone, called the cave desk up top, said, you got to come down here. There's some old nut sitting on top of the debris pile. He's going to kill himself. Well, that's a big red flag right there. Four or five of the cave guides up top come running down. They open the door, come running down the tower. There's nobody here. They're like, well, they're out. They, they hollered down to the cave guide. Was, Where did he go? Where did he go? It was like, he must have went over the side. They're like, oh, no, he fell down in the crevasse over there. Well, they kind of worked their way down. They were looking. They never saw a single soul. He obviously never went down there. And he did not go out the door because he didn't have a key. The only cave guys had keys. Well, they kind of dismissed it as maybe the cave guy down there. This is when you're talking back in the 60s, okay? So people did some illicit things in the 60s. They thought, well, maybe he was not quite right. And they did. They, can, they just dismissed it. And they went back up top. A couple hours later, another tour came down here. They got down to the bottom. The old guy looked up, saw that same old man standing there just waving. He's like, that old man is back. He goes running over there to the phone. He goes, this guy's back. That old man's back. Hurry up. You can catch him. They came down here. They saw they found nothing. Nowhere. Now, some people say that William Lynch, when he passed away, was never taken out of this cave. He died in 1927. And they'll show you where there's a possibility that he might be buried down when get down to the bottom of the cathedral. If you're old, the gay guys had never told you that. They say that he might never have left here, and even if he did, his spirit may never have left. And some of the guys, some of the guys are a little bit more into the psychic than I am. Believe that that might have been old William Henry Lynch waving to his guests as they all went on a tour.